Right, that's the case. It's not too bad, really. Uh, it's been sitting in the shed while I've been doing the other uh, rest of the radio. Lots of uh, peeling paint in places, and it's quite scratched, and it's quite dirty. Uh, the lid and the hinge works quite well. And if you look down the bottom here, this is probably closest, and it was a bit dirty, it's closer to the original colour. I'm not sure this light catches it. I'm not sure I can find that colour. I've got a grey colour. I bought some grey spray paints, so I might just do it all grey. Now the hinge is, I thought the hinge might have been screwed on, but it's riveted on, which I thought uh, I, I was going to take it off and keep that separate because when I respray it, I don't want this to get all stuck with paint. Now then, there was something here. I don't know what was there. I didn't take that off. I have to look online and see. And then the other thing that's on here. Yeah, on the back here, there's uh, that one screw. It's just a warning plate about uh, the water supplies. But I think that will come off quite nicely with uh, nitrogen mores. This is the plate I did earlier, I did this yesterday. This was a similar colour and it was quite, uh, uh, you see some of the paint still in here, I need to scrape that out. I just covered that in nitro mores, left it for about half an hour and scraped it off. Same on the other side. What I'll do with this bottom plate is probably just sand it down and uh, respray it, undercoat it and respray it. And the same goes for the front panel. So there we go, that's what I'm gonna attempt. Well, that's it with the top coat. There was about two or three coats I had to use, and I used paint stripper. Got some grey green blob still on it. What I'm going to do now is rub it down. So, that's the other side there, in the back. The louvers are a bit awkward. I've got in the this plate sort of riveted on. And then the lid. I did the inside of the lid there. If you look inside the box as well, I haven't removed the paint. I used a bit of cleaning on it and it starts to clean up quite nicely at the back. What I'm going to do with there, instead of taking all the paint off, I'm just going to give it a good clean up and probably just respray it, give another coat over the top. As I say, it's not, uh, it's quite thick the paint there and it's uh, one or two bits missing. But I think uh, I get away with just spraying that up with the new paint. One interesting thing I noted on here. Shut this. <laughs> yeah, one thing I noted: the screw here and here, and to the back, they look to be brass or copper. Uh, there's a nut on the other side. Yeah, yeah there's a nut on it. I don't know what this for. Maybe it's something to do with some sort of form of earthing. Yeah. There may be some form of earthing there, the nuts on it. But they're uh, made of copper or brass by the looks of things. Now then, there's nothing attached to them, there's no strips. And they're not holding anything. The other interesting thing, it's not in the book. Is this runner here. You can see now they've got two runners. As if to uh, slide in a card or a circuit diagram or a diagram of the valves but there's nothing in the manual to mention that right I'm going to give that a rub down with some sanding paper and see what it looks like and then start respraying it this is red oxide or is it red lead in those days but I've got some red oxide so I'm going to use red oxide to respray that well this is the front panel uh, quite a nice sunny day today the rest of the radio has been stripped down to the red oxide. This, I'm not sure, has got red oxide underneath it. There's a few chips in it here or there, and it doesn't seem to have any red underneath it. But I'm going to strip the paint off uh, on this side, and I'll turn that over on that side as well. Now, one thing I noticed on the front, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, it has a call sign on it. Um, now the person who passed it on to me doesn't know why that call sign was there it's 9H AIL Malta that was a chap uh, he's our silent key 
and I spoke to one of his friends I found uh, on, on the website and um, he can't shed any light on why this would be written on the CR100. Now next to... Can I be in the film? Next to this core sign, it's more right in there, just about there, and it looks like 15 something, could be the time, 15.0, it's very hard to see exactly. Anyway, I'm going to uh, strip the paint off that and uh, then everything needs to be rubbed down and then repainted. Well, that's the case um, rubbed down. Some of the red oxides come off when I rubbed it down. There's a few little speckles. So what I'm going to do now is give that a, um, a wipe over with some white spirit and then give it another coat of red oxide. Didn't bother really doing much inside. I'll give it a rub down and I think I'll just respray that gray. Um, the rest of it, I think. Yeah, the rest of it should be okay. Well, that's the case uh, finished with the red oxide coating. Um, so two or three coats, I think and it doesn't take long to dry of course it was a nice day today outside i did outside obviously and uh, there's no wind and it's quite sunny uh quite warm so it dried fairly quickly and let's see the lid i forgot to mask off the little brass screws but i'll clean them up later trying to open the lid here so i managed to do the lid as well a uh, bit of overspray on the inside but well, I'm just going to rub that down the inside bit rubbed down and then just respray that grey of course this is going to have a, a grey primer on it first and then the the final top coat on it so that's uh, quite happy with that I'll leave that for a, a few days to really dry and harden before I put the next coat on and then um just turn that round <coughs> that's the back there so to come up fairly well so i'm quite happy with the results of that so. and also i did the uh, the base plate so that's the that's the base plate that's uh, exactly the same that didn't have any red oxide on originally I just had grey paint that uh, I thought I'd do the whole lot the same. So the next thing to do will be the front panel. Right, the front panel here. That's the uh, front of the front panel. Oops. Just going to have to lay that on there. Now I haven't done this one yet because if you look carefully, this hole here. Um, it's not really meant to be there. It was drilled obviously, obviously as an afterthought and they put the noise limiter switch through it. And of course they drilled it right through the wording there. The wording is just the position of where the switch is on the inside. So I'm gonna fill the hole in, smooth it all down and then uh, probably red oxide that as again. And then the uh, top coat after that. Now to fill this hole in here, I'm gonna use this stuff, mini put. Not much left of this box. Um, I've used it for quite a few things. That's the hardness, not and that, and that's the uh, paste. Only a little bit left, but enough to fill that in. So I'm going to put tape over it and pack it from the back. Once it's set hard, I shall then rub it down uh, smooth before painting it. So I use about equal amounts of the resin here. This is. The, uh, the resin here. Here's 1.5 gram there. That's 1.48 grams. Now this is hard enough to harder to put here. So we want 1.8 grams of hardener. 1.5 grams of hardener. Oh, 
1.49, that's about 1.5. So we mix those two bits together. So we mix these uh, two bits together. Don't need that now. Out of the way. Well, that's fairly well mixed together now. Just make sure none of the grey hardness is visible as lumps. So yeah, it uh, dries in about 12 hours, but uh, I think I'm going to leave it de a day or two and probably get the radiator to really harden. All right, the next bit I'm going to do is the hole I'm going to fill in. I'm going to fill it in from the back, so I'm going to make that a bit of tape over it and I'll push it through so it's slightly raised against the tape. When it's set hard, I can then uh, smooth it down flat. I've done this before with another another panel, it seemed to work. So let's see if I can repeat the success. So I'll just put a bit of tape over there. Okay. Right, this is the hole. Um, got some water here. Just wet it slightly. Also, I've wetted this. Okay, let me get that to go in there. Messy at the moment. Uh, put a piece of wood underneath, wood underneath it to keep it flat there, and I'm just smoothing it out with a bit of water. It looks a bit messy, but once it's all dried, it can rub it down with a sanding disc, and it becomes quite. Uh, Smooth. Just give it a bit of clean up. This is the inside, obviously. Now then, <clears throat> that was a piece of wood I had to keep it flat. Right, this is the other side. The with the tape on it slightly raised there I pushed it through so it's definitely protruding so any irregularities will be smoothed out so hopefully you a couple of days and I'll be able to smooth that down and I'll probably red oxide this as well followed by the undercoat right that's it for now I'll leave that safely to dry and we'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching.